why California is in trouble. 340,000 public employees with $100,000 paychecks cost taxpayers $45 billion. So some people always like to scream, where's my taxpayer dollars going? And, you know, how come, you know, my taxpayer dollars are not working for us? You know, so, well, hear this story, and this is not getting enough attention. But I'm about to do something to give it some attention. So, let's look into this one here. This is quite a doozy. So, I've been looking at this, and as they've been saying, I guess it's, there's a little advertisement that's sort of in the way, and it's just trying to load... Alrighty. Okay, so this is pretty uh pretty scary here because um uh, get rid of something here. Hold on, hold on. And by the way, this is out of Forbes. You know, sometimes they have some really really informative information and uh, fresh news that comes out and um, it pretty much uh, sets into motion some of the things that are going on here in uh, real time like in California and so why California is in trouble you know, and right now we already are dealing with uh, the pandemic, and that's one issue. And so it says, why California is in trouble? And this is by an Adam Andre Zrensky. He's a senior contributor. And so you see the title here. So 340,000 public employees with a hundred thousand dollar paychecks that cost taxpayers 45 billion dollars so california public school salaries and pensions the top 10 and there's a graph showing the pay rate that the salary that some of these people get despite california's $54 billion budget deficit and the $1 trillion unfunded pension liability. There are 340,000 and 390 government employees bringing home, now get this, six-figure salaries and pension checks. Okay, and so those checks, taxpayers like regular people and all of us and all these other people that scream about where's my tax dollars going to, well, here your, your uh, questions are answered. That's part of the reason. It's paying the salaries of some of these people even though we have a $54 billion budget deficit, $1 trillion unfunded pension liabilities, and there's 340,390 government employees bringing home six-figure salaries and pensions. Living good. Recently, though, Governor Gavin Newsom asked U.S. taxpayers for a bailout. Okay, now let's see how this all plays out. The governor wrote a letter to Congress request, requesting $1 trillion in coronavirus 50 state aid. So then the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi, obliged by adding 
five hundred dollar or five hundred not five hundred dollar but five hundred billion dollar for the states for what we here in the stimulus is called this heroes act and so the bill passed and now it's awaiting the senate's approval so the bill passed the house but it has to pass the senate and so here in part is why California is asking for taxpayers to help. And so I don't know if you guys also know they're charging, some people probably already know, I've seen some people do some videos on this, where small restaurants are charging a surcharge fee. And the reason is because their restaurants have lost a lot of money, so they're charging surcharges so that they don't raise the prices of the food on the menu straight across the board. And it also helps their businesses overall. And so a lot is going to come out of this pandemic economically in a way where it doesn't fare well with everyone. So already people are complaining about the surcharge and they weren't full aware of it. But some restaurants are kind enough to kind of alert you that there's a surcharge fee. So here in part is why California is asking taxpayers help. So our auditors at the OpenTheBooks.com found truck drivers in San Francisco making $150,000 per year. Okay, so this is a breakdown of the pay that some of these California employees make. So lifeguards in L.A. County costing taxpayers $365,000. Nurses like UCSF making up to $501,000. UCLA athletic director earning $1.8 million. And 1,420 city employees out earning all 50 states governors $202,000. And so it goes on. It's not all. So let's go down. Okay. Try to go up a little bit. Scroll up a little bit. Using our new interactive mapping tool, quickly review the zip codes. California's public employees and retirees who earn more than $100,000 and cost taxpayers $54 billion. FY or 2018 to 2019, I believe fiscal year, I believe that's what it means. Just click the pin and scroll down to see the results rendered in the chart beneath the map. So here are a few examples of what you'll uncover. Okay, and so I guess it goes on to talk about the pay. In other words, what it's sounding like this article is is, is really getting at is that some of these salaries are like really really over the top salaries and you know, I might could understand maybe nurses and doctors maybe some people might say no but you know they save lives but then there's some other employees it's like come on now so 109,627 teachers and school administrators, including CEOs of Summit Everest Charter Schools, Diane Tavner, $450,115. And superintendents, Michael Lynn, $443,875. At Corona Norco Unified Poly Bove, $395. Thousand two hundred fifty-seven dollars at Fremont Union High. Christopher Hoffman, three hundred fifty-one thousand eight hundred eighty-five dollars at Elk Grove Unified. Al Mijares, three hundred forty-eight thousand two hundred seventy-six dollars at Orange County Department of Education. Okay. And so 66,403 college and university employees, including the athletics director at UCLA, Daniel Guerrero, 
eight million dollars, who is retiring amid the criticism that his teams lost too frequently. So the school's football coach, which they call him Chip, or Charles Chip, Kelly, $3.3 million, compiled a 7-17 seven and 17 record during his first two years and is the most highly compensated public employee. So let's go down a little bit. So I might have to migrate up a little bit. Okay. We have a lot of interference. <laughs> so I'm going back. Just bear with me. In other words, while I'm going back, think about that. Those are some high salaries. So I guess maybe that's what this whole article is really getting at. Nine million emails exposed and 2,000 credit cards stolen in sophisticated easy jet attack. <laughs> that doesn't sound good, it does it. And speaking of that, I know that's an off-the-cuff article. I wasn't really on that. There's a lot of theft going on. Now that I'm reading this article and we're talking about, you know, the taxpayer dollars and whatnot, and it mentioned the HEROES Act. So people are awaiting another stimulus. Or they're wondering if there's another round of checks coming. I wanted to say, and stop in here, now is a good time as any, is be aware that there are mail thieves. And there's a lot of people that will break into these mailboxes. And I don't think they really are planning well when they announce these stimulus when they are going to disperse them because they've been saying they're going to send out checks and when you do that the thieves are listening and so what they're doing is is they're breaking in mailboxes and tearing them apart looking for checks and when you say that you're going to send checks and you say you're going to send debit cards that's what the thieves are looking for they're looking and they might even try to rob the mail trucks, thinking that these checks are in there. And so, you know, there wasn't that long ago when, you know, people would have government checks of, you know, like just regular government checks from our welfare checks and things like that sent to them. And I think maybe some people probably still have things like that sent to them. You know, maybe they don't have the capability to have direct deposit. You know, some people might have things sent to them. And, you know, now that this pandemic is happening, there's all kinds of scams, all kinds of things going on. And so I don't think they realize that when they announce that they're sending these checks, the thieves are listening. So um, I just wanted to go off on that for a second and now I'm going to digress back to this article about the taxpayer dollars because a lot of people are concerned about you know what's going on and where their taxpayer dollars are spent and some of them are spent with these high salaried or high paid six figure people that have just been in these positions forever and a day and they're getting bank I mean they're probably not doing too bad even though we're going through this horrible time, of, you know, some people are doing a little bit be better than others. They're faring well economically through this pandemic while others are struggling. And so we see these high salaries. And so I left off at the uh, director at UCLA, Daniel, Daniel Guerrero, with a whopping $1.8 million, who is retiring amid criticism that his teams lost too frequently, and the school's football coach, Charles Chip Kelly, with another whopping $3.3 million, compiled 7-17 seven to 17 record during his first two years and is the most highly compensated public employee in the state. So furthermore, there are 11,310 college and university employees making more than $200,000. So these are people that are really, really doing well 
financially. I don't think that they're really suffering, you know, if they're making these types of incomes. And, um, you know, if they're smart, they probably have a lot of money, you know, to save up, maybe good health care benefits and things like that, I would assume, through their jobs. So 62,204 state of California employees, including a nurse, Ito Chikat. Cole at the University of California who made $501,391 paid through the state system. So a David Windsor Sirkin, senior psychiatrist at Correctional and Rehabilitative Services made $409,399 and corrections paid to dentists, three hundred eighty-five thousand five hundred ninety-six uh, dollars, and I'm going to scroll down because there's a lot of uh, stuff going on here. Okay, let me see. So, the chief regulator at barbering and cosmetology made one hundred twenty-four thousand two hundred ninety-six. Um, $124,296. And so 45,718 city and town employees, including 100,420 municipal administrators and employees who out earned the California governor. The highest paid state governor, $202,000, highly compensated city manager included Deanna Santana. Santa Clara, and these are the pay, you can see it listed here, $396,158. Paul Arvelo, West Hollywood, $353,603. Frederick Cole, Santa Monica, $342,780. Dollars. David Reedy, Palm Springs, $340,149. And Edward Shikata, Paola Alto, $329,080. And Scott Ochoa, Ontario, $328,500. And so reaching out to all government mentioned Santa Anna. I believe, what did it say, Santa? Did it say Santa Anna or Santa what? <laughs> I got lost in the mix here. Let's see here. I'm going to move down a little slow here. It kind of jumps, I guess, because it has uh, a lot of interference and all that. But these are high salaries, guys. These are like really high salaries. And one of Santa Clara responded saying that their city is complex and that they compete for the talent in Silicon Valley, y'all. Silicon Valley, that isn't that the place where a lot of officers live and tech techie people who make big incomes. Palm Springs responded by saying that the city manager is cutting his pay by 20% to $288,579. Wow. That's a big cut, huh? <laughs> Doesn't look like a cut to me, but anyway, that's just my thought here. So, looks like he's still sitting on Easy Street. So, in 2017... We found that 44 lifeguards in Los Angeles County cost taxpayers between $200,000 and $365,000. And today it's worse with salaries comprising of only about half the total cost when including overtime and extra pay and benefits. And so in total, $45 billion in cash compensation flows to local and state government workers across California earning six figures. Six figures! Our auditors did not include the cost of benefits. What did I tell you? 
they didn't even include the benefits. So you know those are good. If they're making that kind of money and they didn't even include the benefits, you don't even want to know that for some of the jobs, benefits, depending on what it is they do, you know, with some of it that I can understand, is sometimes 100%. 100% benefits. I, your vision, your, your dental, and uh, your uh, health overall, and all of it. The whole nine, but, you know, I can understand why cops might need that. Firefighters. Um, and even maybe nurses and, and, and doctors, when you look at what's going on right now, of course. But there's some other jobs you're wondering, you know, why do you need all of that? You know, but anyway, <laughs> you know, I mean, they should get a generous package, but, you know, to each is on, so... But these salaries are pretty high, you know, for some of the some of the professions, you know, I can understand. But then there's others. I just don't understand, you know, why, um, you know, because some jobs, they cap off the salary and you can't make any higher than that. And, you know, once you make a certain amount, that's it. And they, they stop it. But it looks like there's no stopping to these salaries. They seem like they keep going up. So in total, $45 billion in cash compensation, going back to the article, it flows to the local and state government workers across California, earning six figures. So in the, our auditors did not include the cost of benefits, and that's where I left off. So we also haven't included the payroll cost as well of at least 28,000 federal employees making 100000 Dollars within the executive agencies based in California. So corruption in San Francisco. San Francisco self-titled Mr. Clean Mohammed Nuru Public Works Director is best known for the failed efforts to keep feces and hyperdemic needles out of the public way and cases of human waste. Now, I've heard this and I've heard even people who lived in San Francisco, and then, then there was one person I knew who went and moved out there. They stayed there for about a period of three months, and they came right on at, back out to Los Angeles because they said it was worse in terms of the homelessness. So I can attest to what I know thus far that it is really bad in San Francisco with the homeless thing. You literally might step in a pool of human feces it's just all over the streets it's nasty and so like they said the public works director Nuru who they said has failed efforts to keep feces and hypodermic needles out of public way cases of human waste on the city streets spiked to 31,000 in 2019 an all time high and so Nuru earned get this his his pay is $269,500 annually salary. In 2018, and now it is up $55,000 over a seven-year period. Allegedly, that wasn't enough. So in February, Nuru was arrested for charges that he included bribery. So only in San Francisco can the team members on the poop patrol cost taxpayers up to $184,000 each. And so it, it's that bad. So taxpayers expense, educators. And so I'm going to go back up. It says, mapping San Francisco human waste, waste challenge, 141,000 cases human waste in public way. And so there's a map here. I don't know if you can see it, but all of the brown stuff, we know what that means. It's, it's just poop everywhere in San Francisco. So it's, it's cloudy. It's that cloudy area. It's poop everywhere. And so that's what I've heard. They said it's, it's, it's a poop mess out there in San Francisco. And so in the community college system, 10,807 employees made six figures. 247 made more than 200,000 last year. Edward Hernandez and Rancho Santiago, $325,799. And Francis Gorick, West Hills. So let me pull up. 
West Hills. Okay, so West Hills, $316.34. Have the highest pensions. So that is Edward Hernandez Jr. and Francis Gordy. They have the highest pensions. And in 2015, stakeholders criticized them. Then, then president of the El Camino College, Thomas Fallo, of his 345,000 supersized salary. So Fallo retired and receives, he even receives more now since he retired, $314,021 pension. So K through 12 payrolls, 109,627 uh, teachers and administrators earned over 100,000 per year. Nearly 94,000 of those highly compensated educators are currently employed. And the other 15,735. Let's go down here. They're retired and they have six figure pensions. So 10 educators hit the pension jackpot and retired on 300,000 plus. And these include William Hamberman, and I may not pronounce that uh, last name correctly, so sorry for that. So Orange County Department of Education, $380,096. Richard Bray, a Tustin Unified School District, $329,826. Virginia Shattuck, Norwalk, La Mirada Unified School District, $327,139. James Smith, Evergreen Elementary, $309,725. And Richard Miller, Santa Ana Unified, $300. $5,066. Private associations, nonprofits, and lawmakers. Let's go down there. So it just doesn't stop, y'all. You know, it's like these six figure pensions, these high salaries, it sounds like could be a problem. You know, it's like it's not giving room for money to go elsewhere. You know, when they overdo it with, with you know, these people here. And so I understand that people. You know, they're, you know, they have to be paid and they have to, you know, but come on, y'all, you know, if you're overpaying people and then the city is suffering and right now we're, we're really suffering as to what is going on, these high salaries may not be a good idea for, for all these individuals straight across the board. So all kinds of entities are jumping on the gravy train. Private associations, nonprofit organizations, and former lawmakers have gained the system for a personal gain. So, Assemblyman Jim Cooper Elk Grove um, is double dipping the pay and the pension system. Retired at 50 and age 50 in Sacramento County, Sheriff Cooper earned $173,820 pension. So he makes $107,242 as an elected member of the General Assembly, although he refused the non-taxable per diem that's estimated. And so we'll see what it's estimated at. Okay. Wow, it's, it's amazing. I don't think people realize just how much money some of these individuals made. And so by seeing this, it makes you think, do they really need all of this money like this? You know, it just seems like it's far-fetched, you know? It's like, do you really need to pay these people this amount of money, you know, when we're suffering here? You know, the city, they keep, you notice they, every year they keep saying, oh, we're, we're, the, we're, the, the, the state has a deficit or the, the, you know, the, our country is is is, is on a bu has a budget that is 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 going under. You know they're always talking about how we don't have the money, but all these people are making these high high salaries. And so here we got uh, where we left off. 
who knew that the student unions on college campuses paid their administrators up to $206,000? Wow. Okay, so this is where I left off. I was looking at that. I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. But all of this is a lot of money. But although he refused the non-taxable per diem, that's where we left off. That's estimated at 39000 a year. Total benefits were $281,162. And so who knew that the student union on college campuses paid their administrators up to $206,000 and their pensions are guaranteed by taxpayers? Are their pensions guaranteed by taxpayers? The union at UCLA Associate Students Inc. paid our administrators between $191,000 to $206,000 last year. There are 52 student union administrators across the state who made six figures last year. Retired Retirees receive pensions to up to $106,000, and government associations of all types are dialed into the public pension system. And these associations are organized as nonprofits and include associations of governments, schools, boards, water districts, utilities, special districts, and even flood control associations. And so we found that 300 314 six-figure administrators who run these government associations, which are funded by taxpayers for $44 million a year in dollars. So the most highly compensated was Darren Chidzi, the Southern California Association of Governments, SCAG, $289,109. SCAG responded to our request comment saying that there are the nations are they are the nation's largest metropolitan planning organization and located in a very competitive job market. Highly compensated locals in the city of Fremont, nearly 700 six figure employees made $91 million last year. The city attorney Harvey Levine was the highest earner at $291,031. Even the animal services manager cost taxpayers up to $130,000 with over four weeks of PTO pension and additional retirement annuity benefits in the first year of employment. Sanitation District of Angeles, Los Angeles has a history of spiking salaries to pad pensions. So, in fact, four of the top all-time sanitation high earners are either currently employed or retired from the district. Stephanie McGinn, Armagin, Armagwen. So, excuse me if I mispronounced the last name, but the pay was $366,387 pension. Grace Robinson High, $329,130. $1 salary. James Stahl, $321,838 pension. Robert Ferrante, $306,552 salary. Before COVID-19 crises and local governments in California were plausibly Operating now with tax revenues dropping underlying financial weaknesses are being exposed. So in a move praised by the fiscal reformers, Governor Gavin Newsom proposed a 10% across the board reduction in the state salaries along with the state agency budget cuts of 5%. So however, the government, governor admitted that in federal governments sends states more aid then the salary reduction will be restored. Okay, so California, in other words, like many states with excessive pay, pensions, and costs, is relying on the U.S. taxpayers to see them through the crisis. So this is by an Adam Andrensky, and, or Andrensky. And so I thought this was really useful, especially by us going through this pandemic and a lot of people worried about incomes and why things are so frustrating, you know, you know, you've got 
one group that just seems like they're faring through the pandemic pretty well, and then you got other people who are just really struggle, struggle, struggling. They can't even access unemployment, or they're having to go to these jobs and risk possibly getting infected with COVID-19 just to pay their bills. The rent freeze, I just want to stop again and tell you guys, rent freeze is what it is, a freeze. It doesn't mean they're going to cancel the rent. It just means they're freezing it. Eviction freeze doesn't mean they're canceling an eviction. It means they're just freezing it for now. Once this stuff is over with, it is back on and cracking. They're going to be expecting their money. And they're going to go ahead with the evictions. So some people are taking advantage of this time. And when they get a little money in their pocket, they're not really paying their bills. Or they're getting behind in their rent. Because... You know, even with the mortgages, you know, if they do a forbearance, forbearance doesn't mean they're canceling anything. It just means they're giving you a chance to either pay a little amount of money over time or to come up with the amount of money at some point. You know, they're giving you a chance to come up with the money at some point. But at the end of the 12 months, they're going to want their money and it's going to add up. If you do not pay anything, it's going to be crazy. 12 months of mortgage payments, that's going to be a shit show. I'm just telling you. Rent, you know, you don't pay your rent. You don't put a little 200 here, a little 300 here, a little $50 here, 100 there, or whatever. And then at the end of this, when this thing is over, it's, it's not going to be a show and pony ride anymore. It's going to be hell to pay. You know, so you're going to see a lot of a, a tsunami of evictions and more homeless people and people that are going to be displaced because they didn't take this thing serious. So I wanted to add that in there. And then you got some people who have these high salaries. This is what this article is about. It's out of Forbes. And so, you know, you got people that are getting paid all this money and they're not even working. Some people are working from home and... They don't have to, you know, apply for unemployment because they still technically have a job, quote unquote. They just are not at the building. You know, some people have that, you know, I guess they have that resource for them. You know, they can work behind a computer at home as they did in the office. Um, unfortunately, not everybody's life is like that. And so people have to consider that. And considering what's going on, you know, too, I don't know if you guys noticed, there are some people that were taking these loans that even didn't even need those loans. They were taking the PPP loans and they were meant for what I was hearing. They were meant for small businesses. They were aiming at small businesses. Magic Johnson, he had some kind of program where he was trying to help, you know, women that are, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and then small business, uh, small business, um, loans or monies or something like that or starter up for starter up businesses and entrepreneurs or whatever but another company i guess that had access to it i guess some people weren't really that in, in happy about it um because some of the people that are accessing these loans don't really either they don't really need them they're already doing okay or they're somehow being able to access these loans when they and they need to give them back because they're really not in the position that they need the loans, quote unquote. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I've been hearing. And some people have been really voicing their opinion. They've, they've you know, come at some of these large universities. Some of the, some of them will come back and say, oh, we'll give the money back. There was a restaurant. I think they said they were giving their money back, you know, and they were doing well, and then there's some companies that won't give their money back, and they're already doing well. They're just, you know, but the loophole is they're either a part of something bigger, and they feel that they don't have to give the money back because they're a contributor of the government somehow, where they're helping, you know, they might be a part of Donald Trump's administration. You know, maybe they have donated to the administration. I know that was one guy who was in aviation. I can't think of the name, but they he somehow was able to get a huge loan. And he's somehow connected to Donald Trump's administration. He's given, you know, some 
some uh, money uh, to uh, his his uh, administration, I guess maybe his campaign when he first started. So there's always something that people don't really know that you know some of these places are connected, interconnected. There's inner workings going on. And so they feel, sometimes they'll use excuses. They'll say, well, we were helping the low-income students. We admitted this many students this year. That's what USC did. And personally, I'll be honest with you, I believe the reason why they are trying to up their game or trying to admit some of the low-income students is because of the scandal that happened. Because at first, they weren't even doing that. Let's just be real here. They weren't doing that. But when they started to blow the lid off the water about all these wealthy parents bribing to try to get their kids into school, the top schools, that they were shutting the, do- shutting the door on people of color, students of color, you know, and they only have a few, few black people there because it was they were token, token students so that they can meet their quota. That, and let's just be honest, that's what's going on here. They finally changed it to try to flip the scripts. Like, we're getting bad press because of all of the cheaters that we let come in the school. So let's try to open the door for people who really are genuine. And they're, you know, they've probably been wanting to come here forever and a day, and we've shut them out. You know, some of these schools, if they're not public, they're private. And USC is private. And so they've had a history in the past, even before all of this happened, before the bribery and all that scandal and stuff, of, you know, getting admission college applications. And if your name sounded like a black sounding name or you sounded too ethnic, your application would be thrown out, so to speak. So I'll just say that. I don't know if anybody knows, remembers that far back, but I remember when that was going on and that was a big thing and it, somehow it got swept under the rug, rug really quick and they went back to doing what they usually were doing until this scandal came out and just blew the lid off the water. It was always what we already knew that it was something going on. You know, that, you know, you, how you have all this group right here that's able to get into school And then you have all these other students, they are making 4.0, but somehow they're not able to get into school for whatever the reason, either race, or they don't have the money, or whatever it is, you know. And even if they do get admitted and they have a good GPA, some they take somebody else over them who doesn't have that GPA. And it seemed like it boiled down to classism or race. And so I'm just saying that, but... Yeah, why California is in trouble. 340,000 public employees with $100,000 paychecks costing taxpayers $45 billion. I had to say that again. Because I've heard people screaming, where's my taxpayer dollars going to? Well, here's some of the reason why. Your taxpayer dollars are going to these high salaries some may deserve some of the stuff, some of the money, but you know, some of these salaries are a little, you know, questionable. You're questionable, you know. Well, more than a little questionable. When you got when you all add it all up, you're starting to think, wait a minute, that's a lot of money. And we're always saying that we're in debt. You know, the country's in debt. We don't have any money. You know, we can't do this and we can't do that. Where are we going to, you know, spend the money for this? We have a budget for this. And, you know, so oh, maybe this, and maybe if they start scaling some of these salaries down, really, come on, you know, you know, listen to some of the salaries, you know, I mean, look at this here. California public school salaries and pensions, the top ones. Look at this. Okay, so Summit Everest, Diane Tavner. The salary is four hundred and fifty thousand a hundred and fifteen. Corona Norco Unified, Michael Lynn, four hundred and forty three thousand eight hundred and seventy five dollars salary. Fremont Union High School District, I think it's that high school district, Polly Bove, three hundred and ninety five thousand two hundred and fifty seven dollars. 
Orange County Department of Education, William Ham Hamill or Hamill pension. This is the pension. Three hundred and eighty thousand and ninety six dollars. And I read some of this in the article. I mean, just listen to that and you can see it. I'll let you see the rest of it. I'm not going to read all of it. But wow, that's that's a lot. That's a lot of money. You know, it's like that's for one person. You know, come on now. That's just, and then, you know, here we got the pandemic and everybody's struggling. So anyway, I'm going to leave this video go. What do you think about this? This is, I think these salaries are, I'll be honest with you. I think some of this stuff needs to be scaled down, you know. Well, having said that, like, comment, subscribe, and thanks for listening. And trust me, there are more scandals where that came from. I'm not surprised. Keep your eyes open, your ears open. And I'll see you next time.